the story of the weaver's daughter. The Buddha and his congregation of monks once had occasion to visit the people of Alavi. The people welcomed the Buddha and his retinue and provided them with offerings of food. At the conclusion of the meal, when the assembly was well rested and their minds were clear, the Buddha gave a teaching. As with all occasions the Buddha taught, he chose a subject that was particularly suited to the audience he was addressing. On this occasion, he taught the people of Alavi as follows. Practice the meditation on death, saying, Uncertain is my life, certain is my death, life is unstable, death is sure. Now this practice is considered very strong medicine indeed, and is only assigned by a teacher to those disposed by temperament to benefit from it. And so it was that the Buddha discerned the people assembled in front of him were of this particular type. However, when the Buddha and his retinue departed, most of the assembled went back to their absorption in their worldly duties. There was one who did not forget his instruction. She was a young girl of about 16 years of age, the daughter of a weaver. She had listened intently to the Buddha's teaching and thought to herself, Marvellous indeed is the speech of Buddhas. It behoves me to heed this instruction and practice the meditation on death. And so that is what the weaver's daughter did. By day and by night, whether walking or standing or sitting or lying down, she practiced the meditation on death, just as the Buddha had instructed. She did nothing else but practice this meditation on death and she continued to do this for three years. After three years had passed, one day, while in Jetavana, the Buddha surveyed the world and saw that the young maiden's practice had now matured and she had come within his net of knowledge. He knew that if she encountered him again within the next few days, she had the opportunity to win a great advantage. If he put to her four questions and she answered them correctly, then he would be able to pronounce a stanza, the hearing of which would establish her in stream entry, the first stage of enlightenment. If she did not have this opportunity at this time, then she would continue on in the round of existences and her future would remain uncertain. So the Buddha and his retinue of monks departed for Alavi and when they arrived at Agalava Monastery, the people of Alavi went there and invited the Buddha and his retinue to be their guests. When the weaver's daughter heard that the Buddha had come, her heart was filled with joy at the thought. And she reflected, Now for the first time in three years I am to see the teacher and hear him proclaim the Dharma, containing within it all sweetness. But her father, on his way to the workshop, said to her, Daughter, a garment for a customer is on the loom, and I must complete it today. Replenish the shuttle and bring it to me. The maiden thought, It was my desire to hear the Dharma, but my father has addressed me thus. I must obey my father and replenish the shuttle, lest he become angry and vexed. When I have completed my duties, I will then go and listen to the Dharma. So she sat on the stool and replenished the shuttle. In the meantime, the people of Alavi waited upon the teacher and provided him and his retinue with food. When the meal was over, they took his bowl and waited for him to return thanks. But the teacher said, I came here on a journey of thirty leagues for the sake of a certain maiden of family. As yet she finds no opportunity to be present. When she finds the opportunity to be present, I will return thanks. And with that, he sat down and remained silent. And so the maiden finished replenishing the shuttle and placed it in her basket and made her way to her father's workshop. In doing so, she passed the outer edge of the congregation and saw the Buddha seated and waiting. When she passed, he lifted his eyes and gazed upon her. 
She immediately stopped in her tracks, meeting his gaze with wonder. She felt he had cast his gaze upon her in order to usher her into his presence, and indeed the teacher had done so for this very reason, for he knew if she did not come now, she would not hear his teaching and would miss the opportunity to gain stream entry. Why was this? Because later that day she would die and be reborn elsewhere, and so only now would she be able to take advantage of his teaching. We are told, for her, there was no escape from death that day. At the mere hint she approached the teacher and paid respect and sat down in the middle of the assembly in front of him. No sooner had she done so than he addressed her thus, Maiden, where do you come from? I know not, Reverend Sir. Where are you going? I know not, Reverend Sir. You know not? I know, Reverend Sir. You know? I know not, Reverend Sir. The assembled multitude were offended and said, Look at this weaver's daughter. She talks as she pleases with the supremely enlightened one. She should have spoken plainly in answer to his questions. Instead, her answers make no sense. The teacher bade the crowd to quell their murmurings, and then he turned to the maiden once more and asked, Maiden, when I asked you, where do you come from, why did you say, I know not? She answered, Reverend Sir, you know I came from the house of my father, a weaver, so when you asked me this question, I knew you meant... From whence did you come to be reborn here? And that I know not. And the teacher said, Well said, well said, maiden. You answered correctly. And then he said, When I asked you, where are you going? Why did you say, I know not? She replied, Reverend sir, you knew I was going to the weaver's workshop with shuttle basket in hand. So when you asked, where are you going? I knew you were asking, where will I be reborn? But as for me, I know not where I will be reborn once I pass from this present existence. And so I answered, I know not. Then the teacher said to her, You have answered correctly the question I asked you. Thus did the teacher congratulate her a second time. When I asked you, you know not, why did you reply, I know? Reverend Sir, this I know. I shall surely die, and therefore I said so. Then the teacher said, You have answered correctly the question I asked you. Thus did the teacher congratulate her a third time. Then he asked her, When I asked you, you know, why did you say, I know not? This only do I know, Reverend Sir, that I shall surely die. But at what time I shall die? whether in the night or daytime, whether in the morning or whatever time, that I know not, and therefore I said so. You have answered correctly, said the teacher. Thus did the teacher congratulate her a fourth time. And then he addressed the assembled crowd as follows. So many of you failed to understand the words she spoke, and were offended. For those that do not possess the eye of understanding... They only are blind. They that possess the eye of understanding, they only see. So saying, he pronounced the following stanza. Blind is this world. Few are there here that see. As few go to heaven, as birds escape from a net. At the conclusion of this stanza, the maiden attained stream entry the first stage of enlightenment, and the assembled crowd gained comprehension of the Dharma. And then the maiden rose from her seat, paid her respects, and took her shuttle basket to her father. When she arrived, her father was asleep at the loom. She did not see that he was asleep, so presented the shuttle basket. As she did so, the basket hit the loom and fell with a crash. Her father awoke with a start, and reached out for the loom and accidentally pulled it, so it swung round and struck the maiden in the chest. She fell down, and then and there she died. 
and was instantly reborn in the world of the two Sutta gods, a stream enterer bound for full enlightenment. Her father saw her body lying there, spotted with blood, and was overcome with grief. He felt nothing in the world could assuage his anguish, but in his desperation he ran outside and fled to the Buddha, threw himself to the ground and pleaded, Reverend Sir, extinguish my grief. Grieve not, disciple, for in the round of existences, without conceivable beginning, you have even thus, over the death of an only daughter, shed tears more abundant than the waters of the four great oceans. The disciple, hearing this discourse on the round of existences, comprehended the extent of his former births and the suffering therein, and his mind became still and calmed. He asked to be admitted to the order of monks. And afterwards, when in a few short years, he attained arahatship, full enlightenment, and was freed from the round of rebirth.